way. Um, if we want to go ahead and we want to take a look, here's my albino uh, red tail boa. Um, just a beautiful looking snake. And I waited a little while to do this video only because I did want to wait for the snake to be comfortable in his new environment and moving around. I'll give you guys a little tour of his setup while the snake was out. Um, as many of you guys know, I got this snake at only three weeks old. So very, very shy, very, very tentative. But the snake has really settled in unbelievably, as you guys can see there. And um, just be becoming very active, moving all around the tank. So the next step is going to be to set him up with something much bigger. And I got a really good theme planned for this. But let's go ahead and let's take a look and see what we got going on here for him now. Um, we got one of my old custom covers with just like that diamond and diamond pattern as you guys can see uh, just to hold in heat and humidity and just keep a nice steady atmosphere in there for the snake um, we're using a bark substrate like I do with all of my tanks uh, just because we like the way that it holds uh, moisture um, it also does hold uh, heat very well you know it's good for a heat source um, or an insulator and plus it's um, it's a very natural substrate for, you know, red tail boas, so I do like to use it. It's something that you would find in their normal environment. Uh, on the left side, we have a small bowl, small water dish. It is big enough for the snake to get his entire body in there. Haven't seen him soak yet, but once again, we're going to try and pick that up. We just got a little prop in there, I guess, the snake and a golf ball. And then on the left side, we have the skull hide which you guys can see over there. Um, that's his cool hide. And you guys have seen that in some of my other tanks as well. Um, just, it's just good to have, you know, places for the snakes to go to warm up and cool down where they can be protected. And I get a lot of pictures and stuff with the snake inside that hide, so he definitely does use it. the uh, my little TPC at Sawgrass 17th hole. It's actually a business card holder. So, and then we went and we decorated it out with the jungle weed and everything like that. Uh, we're using a standard overhead 5% UVB and then he has actually has a blue light at night which is off. I can probably show you guys a couple of pictures of that as well. The idea to use a blue light uh, first came uh, with the theme of the snake of terminal frost. Uh, when I was editing this picture I was thinking how can I make him theme and, and be you know cold and have it reflect the theme of the snake. So we photoshopped that into an ice picture, and then we went and added snow. Um, and then when we did ultimately add the blue light, we got these natural looking shots. Uh, you can see there, they're unedited, uh, just beautiful shots of the snake. And because he's white, any color that hits him, he's gonna reflect that color. And I really think it does uh, show through on the snake. But I did wanna let everyone know that the snake has settled in, as you guys can see there. I mean, this is, three o'clock in the afternoon daylight and the snakes out which is good so also might be looking for food you know it's supposed to be fed tomorrow and I'm gonna hopefully be able to feed the snake out of its enclosure tomorrow I was having some tough time with him getting to eat it first even when I was around but eventually the snake did take and I'm hoping to feed him outside of this enclosure tomorrow I did want to take a minute here before we continue and talk about the second level that the snake is perched on right now because I didn't hit on it in the video it is set up um, just like in my other tanks um, with the suction cups and the vines extended across. I went a little more abstract with this one and stopped it in the center and kind of put a perch and you could see it uh, extended straight up in the middle there and uh, suction cup to the plexiglass and because we've done that we end up with a lot of uh, different types of natural shots for the snake. 
you know, rather than it being, you know, pretty much symmetrical like I've done in the past, uh, we end up with the snake being able to get into a lot of uh, different positions um, and just hundreds of thousands of uh, different shots that we could take uh, of the animal because of this particular second level design. Um, and I didn't want to extend it all the way across until we do get him into his big enclosure. And then once we do that, we're going to give him a full second level. One of my favorite pictures right here, uh, as you guys can see, just a you know, just ton of great pictures that we can get from the snake because of the second leveling. I want to point out about this particular snake, um, how white it actually is. Uh, very hard to get some good video of them. And um, he gets the pictures and, and whatnot. I have to constantly adjust the lighting because the snake produces a glow and he produces a, uh, a glare off of the light. So it is very tough to get really good shots of. This is probably the most frustrating photo shoot I ever had. Um, as you can see with the white light shine directly on top of the snake, it produces a real uh, haze or a glow around his entire body. It kind of fuzzes out the rest of them. They do look really cool. Um, in order to sharpen it up, we pulled some of the hue out and we end up with a picture like this as well. So, still, nonetheless, great shots. And I've also noticed that the snake is a lot whiter than most of the snakes out there. This snake, you can see, is clearly you know, pretty much a pure white, almost a snow white. And he just has an orange pattern on him. Um, almost gives him like a pink look or a pinkish hue or just like an orange glow type. But other than that, all the other snakes that I've looked at, they look more of like sun glows than, uh, than actual albinos. Um, is this a true 100% albino? I mean, I would have to say no, only because the snake has got orange in them. You know, in order for any animal, I would believe to be 100% albino, it would have to just be pure white. Something like that I've never seen. Um, but this is a lot different than Crazy Diamond. Crazy Diamond is obviously a hetero for orange striped albino. So it definitely has um, a lot darker color to it. Um, but I did just want to touch on a couple of things of that. And I also want to do an HD, uh, you know, hopefully video, you know, just like a picture spread of some of the HD pictures and stuff that I've taken of the snake. But the snake's doing phenomenal, okay? And, you know, whatnot, Terminal Frost or Floyd, whatever you guys want to call them is fine. Um, there was a tie for the names and everything, but um, I think Terminal Frost is suiting. And what I'm going to do for him um, when we get him into his next enclosure I'm going to actually set him up with a theme, like I have done with all of my other tanks. And I'm going to like um, try to do some type of snow snow theme with, uh, you know, like maybe like a, a mountain, you know, like a snow-capped mountain for his hide and, and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe try and dye some of the leaves and, you know, figure out, you know, some type of snow substrate to do for him. But I really want to blow it out. Um, and blow out the steam of terminal frost. So well, let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, there he is once again. The snake's just doing absolutely fantastic. And I just did want to put this video up there, let everyone know that the snake's doing great. He's settled in. You know, definitely has no parasites or anything like that. So uh, he's good to be around the other snakes and whatnot. Um, just doing absolutely terrific. All right, guys, I do appreciate it. I did want to give everybody a little update here on terminal frost. Just let everyone know that the snake is doing terrific. Alright, peace out guys. Enjoy.